morning. We're here in the apiary having a look at the honey today and it's amazing how much honey is coming in. It's the springtime here in Australia now and the bees are absolutely hauling in the nectar in order to fill up these frames here. So we're going to be making a little bit of space in this hive and any space we make will be filled up quite quickly. So that's an exciting thing. It's a really exciting time of year. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Flow Hives, beekeeping, ask away. And Bianca, who's in my pocket, will uh, read out those questions and away we'll go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, show you what these frames look like when they're nice and full. Okay, so if you have a look here, you can see this beautiful capping the bees are putting on on the frames when they're full. I don't know, you're getting a bit of a reflection there, uh, but you can see the bees working away on their capping. Give us a thumbs up if you can see that. Also let us know whereabouts in the world you're tuning in from. The bees are walking on their capping, which is super cool. And that means they've decided the honey is ready to harvest. So when you see it looking like that, it's certainly time for harvest. You can harvest a lot earlier when you've just got a few in the middle that are full. But at the moment, we've got a full rack here of honey ready to harvest. And if we look in the side windows, you can see there's a lot of bees. And beneath their feet is the capped cells. So this hive is gearing up in springtime. We'll, we'll need to do a split soon. As the numbers grow, they will overflow this hive. If you have a look at the front here, you can see they're not spilling out the front yet. But what typically happens is the bees will build up and build up and then eventually be covering the whole front of the hive and hanging down and so on. And uh, it's a good idea to take a split before they swarm. So springtime is perfect for that. Any questions, put them in the comments. We'll get to answering those as we go. So back to where we were, harvesting some honey. And I'll just put this phone down. I'm just on my own today so that we can uh, harvest that honey. Look at that, beautiful. So I've got this key and all we're going to do is take the cap out of the top, then put the key in a little way and turn it. Now, if you just wanna harvest a little bit of honey, you might just decide to only put the key in that far and then you'll be harvesting just a small part of the frame. Today we're gonna to go ahead and harvest more of the frame because we wanna fill up these big jars. So it's a, a case of just putting it in like that, turning it and leaving it in that 90 degree position. And pretty soon you'll see that honey coming down into the jar. Any questions, put them in the comments. We'll get to answering those. You can see the honey coming down the tube already, which is a beautiful thing it's and what's even more beautiful is when it's happening in your own backyard from the flowers around you the bees do their amazing job hi Cedar, we've got a question yeah uh, they say i just wanted to ask my bees at home they filled out most of the frames but then they started eating the honey what does that mean okay the bees will ebb and flow whether they're bringing in more nectar than they need or whether they're bringing in not enough. And that'll always change depending on what's going on in the environment around you. So if uh, you watch this window here, over the day it'll even change as, as they're, they're filling. It'll fill up and then it'll retract again. It'll fill up and retract again. And it just means if you notice the bees are eating some of the honey out that they had stored, then it might be a good idea to leave the rest for the bees and uh, or perhaps just harvest one frame or two and leave the rest. So wonderful thing with the flow hive is you don't have to take all the honey. In a conventional way, you didn't have to take all the honey either, but you tended to because it was such an ordeal to, um, to get that honey out of the hive when you were pulling all the frames out and, and setting up your extractor and so on. You tended to do the whole lot while you were there. So now you, you can easily just harvest one frame or a part of a frame or a couple of frames, whatever you like. It's a nice way to do it actually because it's less disturbance for the bees just taking, taking a couple of frames at a time. Great. We also have another question. 
question, how long does it usually take? I'm not sure if that's harvesting or how long to fill the frame. Mm, look at that honey, beautiful, the way it pours into the jar. So harvesting, we'll answer that one first. You'll, you'll see how long it takes here, but it's typically uh, half an hour to, to harvest a frame. And you can harvest multiple at the same time if you want to. And in the colder times, you might like to wait a lot longer. It doesn't hurt to wait for the last dribbles to fill the jar either. So you could leave it there an hour if you want to. In terms of filling up the hive again, this time of year, if you harvest this frame today, I dare say it'll be full again by next week. And that's only because it's springtime. And springtime is the amazing time of year where there's nectar and so many flowers everywhere that the bees really have an abundance and can bring in that nectar into the hive. There, there are other times of year that happens as well, but spring everywhere is typically that time. And conversely, there's other times of year or even seasons where you have a really poor season. Perhaps it, it rained and rained and rained and there was it, the bees were finding it hard to get to the flowers. Or perhaps it's the opposite and it didn't rain at all and the flowers didn't flower. So like anything in farming, it's a, it's a bit weather dependent as well and also dependent on the genetics and strength of your colony. Look at that. Beautiful honey. We might get another another jar going as well while we're here. Any more questions? Yeah, we've got Paul up. He says, Hi, Cedar. I've installed a new queen and I was wondering how long I should leave the hive before checking on them. Okay, new queen. Uh, if you've just installed a new one, I would wait a week or so before checking on her. That's what they say will uh, lessen the chance of her being knocked off by the hive. So, uh Good idea, just wait wait a week before you get in there and look at your queen. And hopefully you've got some nice little grains of rice, little bee eggs down the bottom of the cells. If you wear glasses, take your glasses because they are quite hard to see. So we're just going to open another frame here now. Just because there's so much honey coming in, we may as well keep harvesting some. Okay, any more questions? My favourite thing to do is to do a split simply because it's uh, once you start adding second brood boxes and things, it's just a bit harder to find the queen next time and and so on. And then if you've got a really tall hive with lots of boxes and then the colony gets small again, then you have to start taking boxes off again. So my management strategy is just to multiply where you where you take a split in in the in the springtime when they're breeding up. And that way you've got more colonies and if you don't want one, somebody else surely will. But you can also add a, an, another super if you like or another brood box. Both of those tactics will uh, limit the swarming tendencies as well. Thanks. Nikki from Wollongong would like to know, do you typically inspect your flow frames before harvesting or do you just go by visual through the front window? I go by visual, that's what we designed it for. The whole idea was you don't have to take apart your hive to do the harvesting process. Now, having said that, if you want to inspect them and learn about what this means as to what's going on inside, that's a great thing to do. But as you learn, you'll start to get a feel for what means what and you'll be able to look through the side windows and see what's going on in the hive and, and really gauge whether it's a good time to harvest or not so um yeah you do, you certainly don't have to but go ahead and do some learning at some stage um beekeepers generally will harvest their honey if if it's mostly capped so every now and then you get it wrong and you have some honey and it's too liquid not the end of the world just means you'll have to consume it before it starts to ferment or you can mix it with some honey that's got a low moisture content and average it out, which is what the commercial beekeepers do. Look at that beautiful honey just pouring out of the hive into the jar. It's just such an incredible thing. This one's going to now, another, another one. You can see the honey just pouring out. It's such a, a wonderful thing. I do love honey. 
to be a gap between the roof shingles and the side rails of the flow roof. And can you please show how to use the harvest shelf brackets as external frame holders? Ah, very cool. Okay. Um, there, there shouldn't really be a huge gap here. It is designed, um, so, I mean, it depends. It doesn't really matter if there's gaps in here if you've got the, the plug under the roof in because if you've got those, the plug under the roof, the bees aren't up in there. Are using uh, having the plug of the inner cover out and the roof is an area that the bees are getting up and doing their thing and potentially building comb, then they will actually seal up the gap, any gaps in the roof, including along the edge. If you've got a, um, a panel like this that's really warped, like it's gone into quite a big curve, that can happen. After all, it's, it's wooden wear and it's outdoors and there's moisture changes and so on. So if that, that does happen, then what you could do is um, either just block the gap up under there or you could potentially um, put some screws down through here into the side rail and that would hold hold this down as well. Beautiful. Great. We've got uh, Jose is in Northern California. Um, oops. And he asks, what do you recommend as a complete kit? Okay, the most popular thing in, in that area is the exactly what this hive is here, which is our six frame flow hive. So it's uh, in the, the more temperate areas, people tend to go for the, the slightly smaller size one, whereas this one here is the seven frame, slightly bigger. You can certainly go either, but I'd recommend our, our Flow Hive 2 or Flow Hive 2 Plus, which is this hive here. Uh, it's your choice whether you want to go Western Red Cedar or, or Aracaria, and it's got the extra bells and whistles like these solid legs, ant guards, um, even levels to help you level your hive, a pest management tray down down the bottom here uh, that you can use to catch um, catch beetles in this area. And um, yeah, I would I'd recommend just going for the good one. But having said that, if um, if if the financials are an issue, you can we have uh, we have more economical models as well for you. Um, in the colder regions, people tend to go for the larger size. Uh, commercial beekeepers are often um, advising on the larger size because you've just got a bit more uh, honey stores in there for bees to survive a long, cold winter. In the temperate regions, the, the smaller size, which we call the Flow Hive 6, is um, perfect as well. Now, I missed a question, didn't I? Okay, we've we've got something interesting going on here. Let's just see. Uh, notice notice a bit more activity in the sky. We're going to keep an eye on that just in case a hive over here is about to swarm. It is that time of year where you do get lots of swarms, despite getting in there and taking splits and so on. Uh, queen excluder. So that basically um, is this piece in here. You can see a little black line in between these two boxes. And it's simply a grid that the queen can't get through, but the worker bees can. And what that means is it just ensures that the queen isn't up in your honey collection area laying eggs in, in that section. Now, with a flow hive, you can run without a queen excluder, but you'll have to check whether your queen likes to lay in flow frames. Some queens do, some queens don't. You've probably got a 50-50 chance there. So if you are deciding to run without the queen excluder, just make sure she's not laying in your flow frames. Look at this. So someone asked earlier how long it takes to fill the jar of honey. Now we are 14 minutes in and look, we've got a full jar of honey and that's about a full frame worth. Now I might be in trouble here. This frame may overflow this jar. <laughs> it's uh, such a pumping time of year with so much honey coming in. Now um, we've got an interesting 
uh, event happening here. Look, it's building in the sky now. If we, let's just have a look at, we can even see which hive it's coming from. So this hive over here, we've got, um, this is what it looks like when a colony is starting to swarm. They pour out of the hive, they race out like this. And um, it's quite a lot of, a lot of uh, activity. So we've set up swarm traps around the place, like that little hive down the bottom there. Uh, but nevertheless, um, lucky I'm here because I'll be able to watch this and just put it straight in the swarm trap to make sure we get this one. Beautiful. Uh, we have a few more questions. Hi, can the shallow super be put in between the flow super and the brood box or honeycomb? You can, you can. I, I would, um, you can either put it there or you could put it on top of your flow frames, either one, and do some honeycomb collection on top would make it easier to inspect them later. Look at that, beautiful. Um, it's amazing. So what's happening now is the old queen's been kicked out of the hive by about the half of the bees. And what, what's going to happen is they'll temporarily land somewhere close by. And that's an opportune moment to actually put them in a, a box and give them a home. If they like it, they'll stay. Amazing. Peter says, hello, the capping of some parts of my flow frames tend to be mounted up a lot higher than some of the cells are more sunken. In other words, the capping of my frame isn't flat. Is this okay? That's absolutely okay and bees will, will do that. So if, if the nectar flow suddenly stops, they might decide to cap it even quite indented. And if the, the nectar flow um, is continuing to go, they might really draw it frame a bit further and cap it further out so it really just depends what's going on here we go our honey's still harvesting here look how beautiful it looks yum 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 um, we have another question when is the latest you can purchase a nuke next year so it's a good idea to get organized with nukes and it really just depends on your local bee breeders some will be able to give you in the more more uh, subtropical at all year round and others will have a season they do it in so make some inquiries it's probably the easiest way is to catch uh, not catch a swarm the easiest way is to purchase in a nuke now i'm just going to watch these bees and see where they temporarily land okay it's all going on here today <laughs> Amazing. Casey would like to know, has everyone done a study about light fog treatment at flow frames? My question is, does the fog accumulate on flow frames? Ah, uh, um, don't have the answer to mite treatment. So if anyone has got the answer to them, we don't have those mites in Australia, which is nice for us. Um, so. I, I imagine you don't have your flow frames on or any honey supers when you're doing the mite treatment, but please chime in if you've got uh, experience with that. Henry says, how do you know the frames in the centre are capped and aren't you chopping any worker bees? Okay, that's a great question. My father and I spent a decade really making sure that the mechanism we were building wasn't going to chop up any bees. And we did that by putting gaps in between the parts when they move, and the bees bridge those gaps with their wax. So as the parts come back together, they're not um, a chopper, as you say. Uh, there's a gap, and it can only be wax. And at worst, if you have harvested with a whole lot of bees down the cell in a frame that's not ready yet, then uh, the um, bees, there could be a couple of bees that get stuck in their wax, and the other bees will help them out. Now I've got a bit of a situation here where this frame is going to overflow. So what I'm gonna do is just swap these jars. I don't usually like to mix the flavors between the two, but in this case, I don't have much of a choice because I'm here with no one to help me and I don't have any extra jar. So here we go. I'm just going to um, swap these two over 
Um, in fact, what I might do is, I'll just be quick about it, I think. Okay. Beautiful. Mm -mm. Now, I'm going to um, turn this one off now because um, the jar is full and that one's slowing up anyway. Great. And now I'm going to put the little cap back in, which is part of the finishing harvesting process. Um, wherever I put that. Any more questions? Oh dear, look at that, just about to overflow. I normally wouldn't do this on camera, but I'm actually going to make a bit of space in this jar. <laughs> okay. There we go. Beautiful. That question once more, please. We don't hear where we are in the subtropics. We can certainly um, just leave it on year round. In the colder regions where you've got a, a bee ball that's cluster, clustering together inside the hive, you can get into the situation where uh, the ball moves up through the hive consuming honey and the queen is left behind because she can't get through the queen excluder. Now, um, and then you arrive in spring without a queen because she perished below the excluder. So if you're in those really cold climates, many months, snow, etc., then seek advice from your local beekeepers, but it's a good idea to remove that queen excluder to limit that uh, happening. Vincent says, what do you do if you start to swarm and you only have one hive? If you start to swarm, and you don't have a hive, then make a makeshift swarm catching box out of a out of a uh, piece of um, yeah, out of a cardboard box, and then quickly, as quick as you can, find your um, some beekeeping equipment because they will start building comb in a big box. Now, where are these bees going? You keep an eye on them. Beautiful. Any more questions? Yeah, Claire says, do the best brood box and super need to be secured to each other or just sit, sit on top of each other? They just sit on top of each other, which is neat. Um, the bees glue them together quite fine. Sometimes you get a little bit of drift, but usually not. And your, your uh, bees will just stick your boxes together. Uh, usually you can just uh, skim anything off the top of the jar. There could be a little bit of debris sometimes, but mostly not. And if that's the case, then you can um, then just pop the lid on. So you can just use a settling technique rather than a strainer. Um, but if you if you do need to use a um, – you can use a strainer if you want, basically, but I don't. Um, you just let the gravity do the work, and if anything floats to the top, you can skim that off. A little bit distracted here by this swarm. Um, <laughs> keep the questions coming. Karen, that's a great question. Karen asks, my bees swarmed. I captured the swarm and put them into a, bo a nuke box two days later. And two days later, they left the box. Any idea why? Ah, okay. So sometimes a, a scout bee's um, already gone out and found a beautiful home. So... If that happens, that's a bit of bad luck. If you can find them again, you can put them back in. But um, yeah, if a scout bee gets out there 
and and has already found a new home by the time you get to catching the swarm, then they might decide just to go and uh, and find that new home rather than staying in yours. Um, normally it doesn't happen, I find, but um, it can. Rick from Niagara Falls in Canada asks, when is a good time to use an entrance reducer? We are going into fall soon and I'm wondering about rubber bees stealing honey. Okay. Um, a good time is when, uh, exactly as you say, when you've got a, a what's called a dearth where there's not a whole lot of honey in your hive and the, the, um, the, the bees will seek opportunities to rub out other hives, especially if there's been honey left around and they've got a taste for honey instead of nectar. So as you say, a good time to put on, put on the entrance reducer and just give them a better chance to defend their own home. Great. Uh, Simon says, hi all. My second year of having beehives, it's only just starting to warm up for spring in Adelaide. And Hive 1 has four full frames of honey already, and Hive 2 has two full frames. And um, Jane says, can the bees fly in and out? Yes, absolutely. So the bees are free to come and go, if that's what the question is. So the bees just go in and out of the entrance as they like and like the last question in some cases they might decide to leave altogether so it's not like you're keeping them really they're they're deciding that it's a good home and staying of their own accord so we're really bee havers rather than bee keepers Uh -huh. um, there's usually beekeepers in your local area that would be willing to supply bees. If not, then finding a beekeeper that's already got a hive, especially this time of year, it's a good time to go and take a split. And we've got great videos showing you exactly how to do that. A few ways to get started, but buying bees is probably the easiest. Taking a split is the next one. And catching a swarm is just an adventurous thing that if you're lucky to get to do, then it's a a great adventure. Bobby in Northeast USA is asking, do you have any advice on leaving the flow super on over winter in cold climate? So leaving a, um, it depends. I think it's worth getting local advice for that. The Some people do, some people don't. In the extreme cold, they usually really reduce the size of their hive. Uh, but in other cases, um, they will uh, leave the super on for the bees to consume any remaining honey. So it's a little bit up to you, but um, ask advice from your locals on that one. Okay, they love purple flowers. Like if you have a look at these flowers here, especially some of the native bees. Now, planting flowers around your hive won't actually change your honey crop much. You have to plant acres and acres of flowers in order to really get a, a honey crop from your hive. But th these types of flowers that are purple tend to attract all the beautiful native bee species into your garden, which is why we love to, to plant them. And um, that's a wonderful thing because you might even find you... Um, save some species from the brink of extinction, just giving them stepping stones across the urban landscape. Okay, this jar is just about full as well. So, oh, here we go, one bee's jumped in the jar, see? Everyone thought when we got our invention that that's, you're just gonna get up a jar full of bees, but it usually takes them a while to work it out and we find we can harvest like this most of the time. However, you shouldn't leave open jars of honey out um, longer than the harvesting process because you do not want to start that robbing frenzy. All I'm going to do is get that key and I'm going to fish that bee right out of there and put it back on the landing board and the other bees will clean her up. There we go. Beautiful. Won't take them long. Mac, uh, 
the uh, uh um but if you do find you've got a jar that sat around and went started to ferment because the moisture content was too high another thing you can do with it is go with the flow and turn it into honey mead okay Beautiful, beautiful. We've got time for a couple more questions and then I'm going to have to get up today and uh, catch that swarm. It looks like they're up near the, uh, up on top of the roof somewhere. Okay. Jeff says, I forgot to kill my flow hive when harvesting last year after moving it. Do I need to clean out the bottom of the flow frames before harvesting again? Okay, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So that's this area down here. Um, these are nice and clear, but sometimes you can get into the case where there's quite a big build up and if, if it's left there too long, it can start to ferment. So it's a good idea periodically, if you notice some honey building up, to let that honey out. Now, if it's all fermented, then put your tube in and just drain that away and discard it. Um, and then clean out that point there, which you can do with the, a, this tool here or a stick or, um, the end of the flow tube cleans it out for you each time you harvest with the little tag on the end. Um, but the um, if it looks like this, which is the frame I've just harvested, and it's all built up like that, then make sure that leak back point is clear. And as I say, discard it if it's gone fermented. You can actually see, I can see the bees licking that honey. Um, we did stop it a little bit early, so it's nice and full, but the bees will reuse that to, to refill the frames again. Chelsea asks, have you ever used bee pheromone stuff to attract swarms to an empty hive and what are your thoughts on its effectiveness? So we used that um, recently at my place in a swarm catching box and it looked like there was a lot of activity in there but it turned out there wasn't a swarm in there yet. Um, so, But it does seem to attract the bees and people do talk to it there's one called swarm commander other people get um lemongrass and put it in a little ziploc bag and put a pinhole in it which has a similar effect um but i haven't used it a whole lot Okay, I'm just distracted here by what's going on. So that swarm has taken to the air again, they're coming home. So we've got the reverse of a swarm here now, where you can see they're not leaving, but they're coming home again now. So we've got all of these coming home and going back into the entrance, which is something they do do. And look, they're falling all over the ground. They're in quite a, quite a frenzy here. But basically, here they are, the swarm's back and going back into the hive. So that saves me climbing up onto the roof, which is great. And um, we can seize the moment and, and split this hive. What we'll probably do is take the the old queen out and put her in the, the new split and um, leave the queen cells they're making in this hive, which they would be if they're swarming, to, to um, re-queen the hive itself. Look at that. There's absolutely piles of bees coming home. It's an incredible thing to witness here. So they were just doing a practice swarm, which sometimes they do. Okay, time for one more question. Okay. She removed it for now, so mould on the flow frames. It's um, the bees uh, do the best job, but give them a, a head start with using a bit of a hot water, and maybe you might even have a gurney if it's really bad. You set the frames into open position and give them a good blast, and then let the bees do the rest of the work after letting it dry, of course. Look at that! Here they all are. 
they're coming home and there's so many of them that they're just landing on the ground in front of the hive. It's just really quite a, an interesting thing to witness, this homecoming of the swarm. And they're pouring in the entrance. It's uh, an amazing thing and a good reminder to get ahead of the curve and take your hive splits or make some room in your brood nest by taking, cutting out some of the honeycomb and moving those frames inwards a bit is another good thing to do. Or you can add more boxes to your hive. They're, they're about the three things people do. Um, other beekeepers will get in there and they'll, they'll uh, either, and they'll remove any queen cells they're finding to limit the swarming tendencies as well. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's all going on here in the apiary today. It's um, an amazing thing to, to witness all the things that bees do throughout the season. And we've been harvesting a beautiful amount of honey over here too. You can see this jar filled up in 15 minutes. We've got another jar here. And the bees in this hive are nice and calm compared to the one we've just been looking at. They're just chilling in there and you can see the fresh white capping just beneath their feet. Such a, a marvel to, to be able to look in on this world and what the bees are doing. Tune in again, same time next week.